we are going to put on PPEs to cover ourselves and go in and take care of the clients. We were able to do that. So initially, it wasn't easy. That's why we had a lot of trainings, a lot of education, lectures, and practicals. Yeah, so that we'll be well equipped and know what we are about doing. So far as you are, in, you are in your BPs, you can talk to them. So they are out for some fresh air. So if I want to go in now, I might use this route to go there and then don't own, then I'll enter. And we have two areas. So here is patient exit and entrance. When they come with the ambulance to the four square area, they enter through the glass door here. And they say into the world. The same way when they want to come out, they come out through the glass door. So the nursing station is at the other end, where the blue thing is. When you stand there, it's a glass door. You see the nurses and the doctors sitting there. But their, their entrance is at the other end. So when you pass here, you get contaminated. So that's how when you come here, we need to direct you where to pass and where not to pass. So you can see that we have our beans. And you can see the red lining. It's for a purpose. These days, highly infectious waste are put into the red liner. So when you see something red, it tells you that it's highly infectious. Then the appropriate authorities will come for the for bean, then they what? They treat it before they dispose them of it. It's highly infectious. That's why you can see red beans and all the things. And we are doing segregation of it with the COVID. We don't segregate. Everything that you will use will go into the red. But if it's on the wall, we segregate the waste. We have black, we have brown. We have yellow before the red. Okay. But with them, we don't segregate. We put everything that they use okay. into the red. And they treat it before they what? Dispose okay. of finally. children are young. I mean, I have a baby and then a toddler, three-year-old. So they don't know much of what's going on. But my husband was concerned when he initially heard that UJMC had been selected as a treatment center. So he has always been reminding me to make sure I always put on my PPEs, make sure there's no breach and all of that. And once I allay his fears that indeed this is these are the lengths and the measures which we do to protect ourselves. I think that, that makes him sleep much better. Go to Most bed. of the time I try to just head straight to the bathroom but like I said I have this young girl when she sees me it's always mommy mommy you know she comes to me. So what I I always ensure is that these scrubs don't go home. We have a laundry, I leave it here, and then I dress in my street clothes and then go home. So there's less risk of contamination, of course, hand hygiene is paramount. And so when I go, at least I can give her, you know, I can say a few words to her, and then I head straight to the bathroom and um, yeah, take it from there. We are celebrating all Ghanaian workers, but particularly 
those who have been in the front line, what message would you want to give your, your colleagues or anybody who has a role to play? I'll say that this is, is a privilege to serve. I consider it a privilege to serve. Just like soldiers go to war to defend their country, we have taken a role to serve our country, to serve humanity. And this presents an opportunity. When, when this pandemic came, I didn't think, ever think that I would run away from it. You know, I was ready, willing, and able to just step in and then do the best that I can. And I think that it's a huge responsibility, but also a privilege to serve, to see people get better, to help people get better. And so we shouldn't run away from it. You know, there are people who are stigmatizing health workers. I think that that's unfortunate. Health workers shouldn't be stigmatized. Nobody associated with the disease should be stigmatized. We are all in this together. Anybody can get it, but we are all working to ensure that we get the best outcomes 